Boldwood presents Blue Skies Over Wildflower Lock Written by Hannah Lynn and read by Rosalind Steele The moral right of the author has been asserted. This performance is owned by Boldwood. Chapter 1 Daisy May closed up the shutters after another successful day at the coffee shop on the canal. It was hard to believe this summer was almost over. June and July had whizzed by in a blur, a very hectic blur. Getting the coffee shop up and running hadn't been as smooth sailing as she'd hoped, with issues from licensing to broken windows and a slight turmoil in her love life to add to the mix. But she had got through it and the last six weeks had been plain sailing, relatively speaking. From learning to bake to waking up at 5.30 seven days a week, it was a steep learning curve, but no matter how tired she got, or how much she wished she had just a little more free time to see Theo, Daisy knew she could never go back to her previous office job, just like she could never go back to living in a normal flat. The situation with Theo was less than ideal, Having had her heart broken when she was younger, Daisy had actively avoided getting into another relationship and assumed she'd be single forever. But Theo had changed that. Unfortunately, Daisy's fears about having her heart broken, combined with the very charismatic Christian, who swept onto the scene and nearly swept her off her feet too, meant she and Theo took longer than necessary to get together. Thankfully, Daisy finally saw sense, and they had officially been a couple for just over two months. Theo was everything she could have hoped for in a partner, encouraging and supportive, as well as being a dab hand in the kitchen. He made her laugh more than anybody else, and being with him truly made Daisy feel as though she was capable of anything. In fact, as far as Theo went, there was only one issue. He wasn't there. Daisy hated that she only had herself to blame. While she'd been trying to cope with the unexpected love triangle she'd found herself in, Theo had taken a job on the other side of the country, a three-and-a-half-hour drive away. With the coffee shop open every day of the week and Theo wanting to make as good an impression in his new position as he could, the time they had to spend together was limited, which was why Daisy was shutting up shop 15 minutes earlier than normal, so she had time to get showered and clean through the boat before he arrived. As she finished the final wipe down of the counters, her phone buzzed on the table. Theo's name flashed up on the screen, causing her stomach to flutter with excitement. Dropping the cloth where it was, she hurried to pick up the phone. Hey, you, Theo said as soon as she answered. His voice was enough to make her heart race. It was crazy how much she loved hearing from him, and in only a few hours, they would be together. How are you? How's your day been? You're not still open, are you? No, I've just closed up, she said. Her cheeks were aching as she grinned. Good. Does that mean you have time to talk, then? You know I always have time for you. Theo chuckled. That's a nice line, but you know it's not true, right? You're almost always busy. Daisy grunted. It was true. The only time their schedule seemed to align was late in the evening, and often she was so tired she could only manage 15 minutes of conversation before she fell asleep. Lesser men than Theo might have been insulted that their girlfriend started snoring half the time they spoke, but Theo knew how hard she worked. So, are you on the road yet? Daisy asked as she flopped down onto the sofa. It feels like forever since I've seen you. I know. I'm really sorry about last weekend. You don't need to apologise. It wasn't like you put those otters in the canal. Theo let out a wistful sigh. Oh, they were amazing, Daisy. Honestly, oh, I wish you could have seen them. But we had to stay up there, make sure none of the boaters or boarders disturbed them. 
Theo's job involved general maintenance and monitoring of the canals, which meant that, just like Daisy, no two days were the same. It also meant he could be called upon at the most inconvenient hours, including when the pair were meant to be meeting. Honestly, you don't need to explain, she said. I get it. It's completely fine. As much as Daisy meant it, it didn't stop the knot twisting in the pit of her stomach. It had been so many years since she'd been in a relationship like this, and yet, since Theo had moved over six weeks ago, they had seen each other a measly four times. Three of those times were on weekends when he'd come down to the coffee shop, and it had been so busy he'd had to spend the daytime working with her. It had been nice, of course, just being close to him. But by the evening, they were so exhausted, they could barely even manage a decent conversation. The other time was just for the evening when he'd managed to score the following morning off work. So, are you on your way? she asked again, realising he hadn't yet answered her question. Actually, Theo paused. The knots in Daisy's stomach tightened. It had all seemed so straightforward before he'd left. They'd had a plan. Any time the weather forecast was terrible for more than two days in a row, she was going to head up to Slimbridge. Any weekends when Theo wasn't called in for emergency jobs on the canal, he was coming down here. But the weather had been perfect, with barely a cloud in the sky, and Theo's new job had far more responsibility than expected, and emergencies always seemed to happen. Now she sensed it was going to be even longer until she saw him. Actually, Daisy, I hate to do this to you so much, but... Whatever Theo was about to say was drowned out by a heavy hammering on her front door. Sorry, Theo, did you say you're not coming? The hammering knocked again. Oh, for crying out loud! Daisy muttered to herself. She couldn't imagine who it could be. Perhaps some irate customer who expected her to be open until six, even though the sign clearly said she closed at five. They'd knocked on the hatch doors before, but on her front door was a whole different level of rudeness. Besides, whoever it was, there was no way it was more important than hearing when, or if, she was next going to see Theo. Actually, do you know what, Theo? I'll ring you back. Don't go anywhere. I'll be two minutes. She strode across the September rose, where her paintings hung from the wall, and the afternoon light filtered in through the windows. Once again, the knocking came. Will you just hang on? she said as she swung open the door. Do you... Daisy stopped, staring at the sight in front of her. His long hair was tied up in its normal bun, while the hint of a smirk twisted on his lips. Sorry, I know you were on the phone and everything, but I thought I might come down a bit earlier, if that's all right with you. Chapter Two As Daisy lay in her bed the next morning, she prayed for rain. It wasn't something she prayed for often. After all, her business depended on the bright sunshine to bring out the dog walkers and paddle boarders who were always happy to spend their money at the coffee shop on the canal. But that morning, with Theo lying in bed beside her, she wasn't in the mood for serving coffee. She wanted a day for just the two of them. Maybe they could take a walk together, or better still, take the boat out. After an incident involving a drunken stag do, the boat had been out of action for the best part of a month. Thankfully, she'd found someone who could fix it without taking it out of the water, meaning the cost had been kept to a minimum and she'd only had to shut up shop for half a day. But despite now having a fully working propeller, she hadn't been out on a trip for weeks. You know, you haven't told me how long you're planning on staying, she said as she nestled into Theo's shoulder. I know, because I have to leave later today. Today? Daisy sat upright. You're not staying for the whole weekend? 
You drove all this way for one night. Theo shifted slightly in the bed and raised an eyebrow. Would you prefer it if I hadn't? Maybe I should have stayed in the Cotswolds. You know that's not what I meant. Daisy hit him playfully on the shoulder as she spoke. It's just, I'd love to have some real time together. It feels like the minute you arrive, you're getting ready to leave again. I know, I get that. But it's not forever, is it? When the weather turns, you can shut the coffee shop and spend some more time up in Slimbridge. Daisy let out a long sigh as Theo's words rattled around in her head. To visit him for any length of time meant closing down her business, and that was a hard pill to swallow. Despite the September Rose being a fully mobile canal boat, the likelihood of Daisy opening up anywhere other than Wildflower Lock or Haybridge was slim, all because of where she was. Wildflower Lock was positioned on a canal on its own strip of perfect countryside. She could head all the way to Chelmsford or down to the estuary which led to the sea. But that was where the problem arose. Canal boats weren't designed to go on the open water. Even Theo had been nervous about doing it, and that was putting it mildly. The closer and closer to the move he'd got, the more nervous Theo had become. Not because he was leaving, but because of what he had to do when he left. Getting from Wildflower Lock onto the main canal network that spanned across the country meant going, however briefly, out of the estuary and onto the open water, after which it required a trip on the tidal River Thames before finally joining the network of canals on the west of London, which he could use to get to the Cotswolds and his new home. It's a boat, Daisy remembered saying as they sat down for dinner one evening when Theo had told her his fears. While she was a long way from considering herself a canal boat expert, she no longer considered herself a complete novice either. However, it was clear from this situation that there was still plenty she needed to learn. What's wrong with going out into the estuary? I thought people crossed the channel on narrow boats. Crazy people cross the channel on narrow boats, Theo had replied. Normal people stick to the canals and rivers. The hulls aren't designed to cut through the water. One big wave can capsize you, with no way of righting yourself again. It didn't sound great. Surely there's another way, Daisy had replied, her previous doubts and worry about Theo leaving amplified by the fear that he might not make it to Slimbridge at all. Is there something else you can do? Another way of getting there? He had shaken his head and let out a long sigh. Short of getting a lorry, loading the escape on, using a ton of my savings, no. It's fine, it's summer, the weather is great, this is the time to do it. As long as we have a smooth day to leave, with no wind, we'll be fine. We? There was something in his use of the plural that made Daisy stop. Did he think perhaps she was going too? Or was he referring to himself and the boat? Theo saw her concern and smiled. Don't worry, I'm bringing a friend with me. Dominic has done the route before a few times. It's not that I'm not capable, it's just that I feel safer having somebody else do a trip like that with me. Daisy did too. Theo reached across the table and grabbed her hand. Don't worry, it'll be fine, I promise. And, of course, it had been. But that didn't change the fact that this separation was a big one. There was no chance of him just packing up the narrow escape and bringing it back to Wildflower Lock. Not for a long time. Hey, don't do that. Theo's voice brought Daisy back to the moment, and the fact she was now sitting in bed next to him, the crossing weeks in the past. Do what? Daisy said, flopping back down onto the pillow with a sigh. Get stuck in your head. It's fine. We're fine. Like I said, 
As soon as the weather turns, you'll only need to be down here on the weekends. And then we can make up for all the time we've lost not being together. And how do you propose we make up for this lost time? Daisy asked, rolling over onto her side and propping herself up on her elbow. You know, I've got a couple of ideas. Theo leant in to kiss her. It was a morning breath kiss, something she'd have previously avoided at all costs. But given how rarely they got to see each other, she took whatever she could get. Unfortunately, no sooner had their lips touched than the sound of voices reached them. Well, that's a shame, she heard a masculine voice say on the towpath outside. I thought it would be open by now. Never mind, we'll fetch a drink on the way back. Daisy rolled onto her back and groaned. I could put up a sign, she whispered to Theo. A sign saying I'm sick, that the coffee shop is closed for the day. She wanted nothing more than to sink back into the bed and forget that her job was waiting for her. But Theo ripped the duvet off. Come on, where's that hard-working woman I fell in love with? Daisy froze. The L word hadn't been mentioned before apart from in conversations with Bex and Claire, where her friends had mercilessly asked her to admit how she felt. But she wouldn't do that. Besides, she told them, she was sure Theo felt the same way as her, so what did it matter if he used the actual word or not? But now she'd heard it, she wasn't sure how to react. After all, saying, woman I fell in love with, wasn't the same as saying, I love you. Was she meant to respond? And if so, what was she meant to say? With a flood of heat rushing to her cheeks, Daisy jumped out of bed and marched towards the bathroom. Come on, she said. If you're here, I'm putting you to work. You've got a lot of cappuccinos to make. Chapter 3 when working in the coffee shop by the canal, days went at a pace that Daisy had never known. Her last job, before inheriting the September rose, involved eight hours sat behind a desk, staring at a computer screen, while her eyes constantly flicked up towards the clock, praying that time would speed up. Now, however, she wished it would slow down. As much as she hoped there might be a quick shower of rain, or at least a cold spell to break up the day, there was no such respite. She and Theo didn't even get as much as a lunch break to stop and talk together. Instead, they grabbed a slice of cake each while they were on the go. It didn't help that Daisy's lion meant she hadn't done the early morning bake like normal, and so was running back and forth to the kitchen, tipping scones onto baking trays while whipping up cream cheese icing for the carrot cake. By the time five o'clock rolled around and Daisy finally had a chance to restock the paper cups above the coffee machine, Theo was already checking his watch, a sure sign that he needed to leave. Are you sure you can't stay tonight? It is Sunday tomorrow, Daisy stressed, as if Theo might not be aware of what day of the week it was. This is not forever, he told her as he wrapped his arms around her waist and pulled her in for a hug. Honestly, when winter comes, we'll be so sick of each other, we'll be laughing about this. Do you think? I know. We'll be praying for the summer days when we get to be apart. Not for one second did Daisy believe it was true, and yet, for Theo's sake more than anything else, she forced herself to smile. Come on then, she said. I'll walk you to the car park. As their fingers remained intertwined, the weight in Daisy's chest grew heavier and heavier. Her last relationship had ended because her ex didn't want to do long distance, and she had been so mad about it. But now, as she was saying goodbye to Theo after only 24 hours together, 
she couldn't help but wonder if he had been right. Please don't look like that, Theo said when they reached the car park. Sorry. Daisy forced herself to look slightly more upbeat. You're right. It's not like it's going to be long until we see each other. You're still planning on coming down next weekend too, aren't you? It's meant to be a scorcher. Rather than confirming his next visit, as Daisy had assumed Theo would do, her boyfriend's eyes shifted to the ground, causing a lump to fill her throat. Theo? There was no denying the look in his eye, which only intensified as his gaze met Daisy's. I didn't want to say this in the boat, but these next few weeks, they're going to be manic for me. Manic? What does that mean? Daisy asked, the pit in her stomach taking on a new, churning feeling. They're doing some bridge work that I need to oversee. It's meant to last for five weeks. I'm not even sure where I'll be. I might moor the escape in Bath for some of it, at least on the River Avon somewhere. So, what does that mean for us? Daisy hated how she sounded insecure, but it was hard when the only other relationship she'd had bolted at the thought of anything long distance. It doesn't mean anything for us, Theo said. I love you, Daisy May. There was no ambiguity now. No way to misconstrue those words. He had said them, clear as day, staring straight at her. I love you. And just like I said, when winter comes around, you and I will spend so much time together that we'll be sick of each other. Daisy could feel the tears prickling behind her eyes as her heart swelled. The way Theo said things just made everything sound so simple. Like she had nothing to worry about. This was it. They were a properly committed couple. A little bit of distance wouldn't be enough to split this relationship up. So? Theo said. So what? Daisy replied, before suddenly realising, Oh! I love you too! She said, grinning from ear to ear. She didn't even move to kiss him, the way she thought they would when they finally said those words. Instead, she just covered her mouth in half shock. Are you sure? Theo said, mockingly wiping sweat from his brow. You know, I was getting worried there. You took your time to reply. I did not. You did too. She laughed and placed her hands on his cheeks. I love you, Theo. Is that enough? I love you with my whole heart. I love you too. And I will love you tomorrow, and I will love you next week, and I will love you when I finally see you again. Now, though, I better go. Daisy didn't object again. Instead, she watched as he climbed into his car, not sure whether she wanted to cry at the sight of him leaving, or laugh at the fact he'd finally said those magic words. Either way, she stayed there watching him as he reversed out of the car park. When he reached the road, he wound his window down and yelled across to her from the gate. I love you, Daisy May! I love you too, she called. And with that, he was gone. Chapter 4 it didn't matter how upset Daisy was at Theo leaving, hearing the words I love you yelled out over Wildflower Lock car park was enough to forget it all. Daisy May was in love. She wasn't just dating. She didn't just have a boyfriend. She had a boyfriend who loved her. It was enough to put a skip in her step as she headed back onto the towpath. There, the closest boat moored to the car park was the Jeanette, which was owned by none other than her mother's new boyfriend, Nicholas. For a split second, 
she considered knocking on the door to see if her mother was visiting. After all, she desperately wanted to share her news, though she decided quickly against it. No matter what her mother said, Daisy hadn't yet seen a pleasant side to Nicholas. Besides, she could simply text her mum to let her know on the phone. Her second thought was to message Bex or Claire, only she immediately discarded those options too. Bex was spending the weekend on a work retreat that she'd been talking about for the last two months, and not positively. Two days full of team-building activities, like leading one another blindfolded through an obstacle course, or completing personality tests to find out what sort of leader you are. All activities that Bex pretended she had no interest in. But deep down, they all knew how much she'd enjoy it when she was there. After all, a bit of competitiveness always brought out the best in her. Unfortunately, it meant she wouldn't be free for a chat. Claire, meanwhile, was currently on holiday in Croatia. The last thing Daisy wanted was to disturb her while she was getting some well-needed family time. For a split second, Daisy thought she was out of people she could divulge this amazing news to when, as she walked up the canal and reached the September Rose, she noted the boat on the other side of it. The beautiful Ariadne was owned by Yvonne, the elderly lady who had been on the canal even when Daisy's parents were married and living there. She had been the one who told Daisy about her past on Wildflower Lock and let her browse through the dozens of dusty photo albums she kept, allowing Daisy a glimpse of her father and mother in a life she had never known. Daisy always promised herself she would drop in on Yvonne more often. After all, Yvonne invited her around for a cup of tea every time they saw each other, but Daisy struggled to find the time. After talking to people all day at the coffee shop, the last thing she wanted when she finished was yet more chatting. Only today was different. Today she wanted to talk, and maybe, she thought, she could kill two birds with one stone, giving Yvonne a bit of company while somehow slipping in the news of her and Theo. Having decided what she was going to do, Daisy popped into the September rose. She grabbed the unsold slices of cake, popped them into one of her takeaway boxes and crossed over the bridge. The Ariadne was identifiable by sight but also by aroma. It was the only houseboat on the canal that smelled strongly of incense. The scent, which rose from constantly burning candles and incense sticks, formed an invisible fog around the moorings, and for an instant Daisy regretted the decision to visit her friend. Thankfully, she spotted Yvonne sitting on the stern of the boat, enjoying a cup of tea outside. Fancy a slice of cake to go with that? Daisy asked as she approached. Yvonne turned to face her and grinned. I never say no to cake. Daisy returned the smile. I thought you might say that, though I brought a slice for both of us too, if you want some company. A slight pause followed after which Yvonne waved her hands impatiently. What are you waiting for then? Pop aboard? A minute later, Daisy was sitting on the hull of the Ariadne with a box of cake open between them. So I saw your young man last night, Yvonne said between mouthfuls. He popped in to say hello to me. He did? Daisy wondered when that could have been, as from the moment Theo had arrived at the September Rose, the pair hadn't separated. Then again, he probably arrived earlier, while she had a queue, and came here first. That would explain why she hadn't seen him coming up the towpath. Oh, we couldn't stay. He was rushing to get to you, Yvonne confirmed what Daisy had thought. But he wanted to make sure he said hello. Tell me, how's that new job of his going? Sounds like it's keeping him busy. Too busy, Daisy said. She didn't mean to sound so down. After all, that was the exact opposite of why she had come here. But it was how she felt. That doesn't sound good, Yvonne commented. 
everything all right between you two? Oh, yes, everything is wonderful. He told me he loved me. Daisy grinned, happy to have shoehorned the comment in almost naturally. Well, of course he loves you. Any fool can see that, Yvonne remarked, almost rolling her eyes. Daisy smiled to herself. Others had said that before, that it was obvious how crazy Theo was about her from the way he looked at her. Still, there was something about hearing those words from his mouth that made it all the more concrete. It's good. It's really good. I just wish I could see more of him. He's going to be away for a month now. Honestly, if I could take the September rose on the sea, I swear I would head straight to him tomorrow. Yvonne frowned. What do you mean, if? Of course you can take it on the sea. Well, not the open sea. And it's been a long time since I've done it, but... Daisy paused, her fork poised just above the cake. What do you mean? You took the Ariadne on the sea? The Ariadne and the Minotaur before that. That's the only way to get out of the estuary. Daisy could hear what Yvonne was saying, but she was still shaking her head in disbelief. But I thought you couldn't. The hull, the flat bottom. I thought if a wave hits you... Oh, yes. If a big wave hits you, you're done for. Yvonne said, matter-of-factly. But we're not talking about crossing the Atlantic here. Get a calm day, get your tide timings right, and you can get round to South End easily enough. And after that, well, the world is your oyster. Or at least the rivers and canals are. Daisy sat back in her chair, ruminating over what she'd just heard. She'd always thought that the September rose could only be moved off this stretch of canal on the back of a trailer. But Yvonne was saying she'd done the journey, and multiple times at that. As she sat there, pondering the idea, Daisy couldn't help but think how nice it would be to turn up and surprise Theo, to moor up alongside the narrow escape. That way, they wouldn't just have to spend one or two days together. They could spend weeks. Months, even, assuming she could find a suitable spot for the coffee shop. She looked at Yvonne, unable to suppress the giddiness that was flooding through her. Would you fancy doing that trip again? she asked. Chapter 5 Daisy immediately regretted her words. After all, it was a ludicrous suggestion. Theo had been anxious enough about making the trip and had needed to take a more experienced friend with him to help pilot the boat. It was preposterous to think Yvonne would want to undertake such a journey at her age and especially with someone as ill-equipped as Daisy. Though, as Daisy looked up from her tea, she noticed the slight twist at the corners of Yvonne's mouth. We'll have to get going soon, she said. While the weather is still nice, the moment it turns, everything becomes a lot more challenging. But I think I've got one last adventure in me. Who knows? This trip to Slimbridge might be exactly that. Well, yes, I, I was only joking, Daisy said, hoping to divert the conversation to another topic. Just voicing my thoughts aloud. Now, tell me what you think of the cake. It was my mother's recipe, but I added some lavender to it. Do you think it worked? With the conversation successfully shifted, the pair carried on chatting about day-to-day -day things, how busy it was with the paddle boarders, how many of them had been kicked off the canal for not having a licence, and which of the canal volunteers were retiring after the summer. After about half an hour of nattering, Daisy felt herself yawn and once she started, it was near impossible to stop. It might be the weekend, but she was working seven days a week and couldn't see that stopping any time soon. Sorry, Yvonne, I should head back, she said. I think I need an early night. 
No need to apologise. Thank you for coming over. Perhaps I could swing by one evening if you like. Make you my famous yellow curry. That sounds fabulous, Daisy replied. Just let me know when. After a hug goodbye, Daisy stepped onto the towpath and started her walk towards the bridge. She had just reached it when Yvonne called out to her. And I'm in, you know. If you change your mind, I'm definitely in. The next morning, when Daisy opened up the coffee shop, she was surprised to see her first customer ready and waiting. Early patrons weren't unusual, but seeing this one at such an hour certainly was. Mum, what are you doing down here? You know, I was just here, her mother said. It didn't take long for Daisy to connect the dots. For her mum to have been at Nicholas's so early in the morning, it was more than likely she'd spent the night there, and that wasn't a thought Daisy wanted to dwell on. Taking a deep breath in, she reminded herself that her mother was an adult and said, Well, what can I get you to drink? Or would you like something to eat? I've just baked a Bakewell tart. It won't be anywhere near as good as yours, but it's not too bad. No, no, Nicholas made me breakfast, thank you. Her mother kept her expression neutral. An Americano would be lovely, though, and make it a double shot. I'm feeling particularly tired this morning. That was more innuendo than Daisy could handle, so she turned her back to her mother and got to work on the coffee machine. How's Theo doing? Her mother asked as Daisy placed a cup under the filter. He's good, Daisy replied, still not ready to turn and face her. He came down for the night on Friday, but had to leave yesterday evening. That's a shame. I'm sad to have missed him again. Me too, actually. Daisy pulled the cup from the coffee machine, though she held on to it rather than handing it over. Like her mother, Daisy was exceptionally tired that morning, as she'd struggled all night to fall asleep. Her mind had been too busy flitting from one idea to the next. Normally, painting was the key to resolving any of her issues. She could open up her palette of watercolour paints, swirl her brush around in the water, and within minutes she'd be thinking about nothing but the washes of colour on the page. But after she got back from Yvonne's, her mind had refused to settle. Instead, it kept returning to the same thought. Could she do it? Could she take the September rose not just away from Wildflower Lock, but all the way to see Theo? She cleared her throat and began to speak. This is probably going to sound a bit strange, but when you were here with... with... She paused. She never referred to her father as dad. That was too personal. Those words implied a relationship between the two of them, and there never had been one. But, as ridiculous as it was, since moving into the September Rose, Daisy couldn't help but feel a bond forming between the pair. Still, she knew where the land lay with her mother and her ex-husband. When you and my father lived here, did you ever take the September Rose out of the canal? What do you mean? Her mother looked confused by the question. Of course we did. We travelled everywhere. I thought you knew that. During our honeymoon, we spent months on the boat. So you actually went out of the estuary, onto the open waters? At this, her mother's expression changed, her lips pressed together tightly. You mean out into the sea? She reached out her hand, and it was only then that Daisy realised she had not yet given her mother her cup of coffee. Once? Yes, for our honeymoon. Oh, the most terrifying thing we've ever done, I can tell you that. Daisy clicked another round of coffee grounds into the filter, deciding she needed to pour herself a drink too. And the boat made it? Daisy asked, trying to sound as casual as possible. Obviously, she made it. You're fine. The September rose is fine. Oh, yes. It was an adventure, that's for sure. 
We picked a beautiful day for it. Honestly, the sea was so calm, it was like glass, I swear, not a single wave or a cloud in the sky. But I tell you what, I was sick with nerves. Well, that's what I thought at the time. Turns out I was pregnant with you. Didn't change the memory, though. And the way back was just as terrifying. But your father, he knew what he was doing with boats, just like Theo. Daisy nodded, accepting the truth of her mother's words. There was no way she could head out of the estuary in the September rose on her own. But then again, she didn't have to be alone. She already had an all-too-willing and experienced volunteer to come with her. Well, thank you for this, darling. Nicholas does a lot of things well, but honestly, his coffee tastes like dishwater. We'll catch up soon, right? Of course, Daisy said, her mind still thinking of a boat trip she couldn't possibly take. Could she? Chapter 6 The morning influx of customers didn't stop, although not all of them wanted coffee or cake. By midday, it felt like every other person asked if Daisy had ice cream on board, or if she knew where they could get some. Unfortunately, she had to let them down on both fronts. More than once, she'd looked at whether it would be feasible to sell ice creams, even if it was just the frozen lolly type, but she and Theo had both concluded that it wasn't. It didn't matter how she looked at the space, there was no room for an ice cream freezer unless she wanted to sacrifice some of her living room or a bedroom. The space in the September rose was one of the things Daisy adored the most, as was the ability to have friends stay over. She wasn't ready to give either of those up yet, so the customers would have to go without until she could think of a creative solution. At 4.15, when the majority of visitors were packing away for the day, Daisy finally closed the shutters. Without even bothering to tidy up the machine or restock, she dropped onto the sofa and allowed herself a proper deep breath for the first time all day. Tidying up would have to wait. With all the windows open and the breeze sweeping through, the September rose was pleasantly cool, yet even as she kicked off her shoes, Daisy couldn't get comfortable. Even after she got back up, cleaned up the coffee machine and washed the milk jugs, she couldn't rest. Her gaze continually drifted outside, onto the water. It had been such a calm day that the only ripples on the surface came from the paddle borders and the waterfowl. It couldn't possibly be like that on the estuary, could it? Or the open sea? But then what had her mother said? When she had made the trip, the sea had been so calm it was like glass. Surely taking the boat on the water when it was like that would be no different than driving it on a canal, and she was perfectly capable of that. With her pulse increasing ever so slightly, Daisy stood up, slipped her shoes on, and marched over the bridge. Are you serious? She didn't even bother with a greeting, but started talking to Yvonne the moment she saw her sitting out on her hull. Would you do this trip with me? The trip? You mean to see Theo? There won't be lots of room, Daisy said, her thoughts spilling from her mouth before she had time to think through them. You could take my berth and I can take the smaller one, that's fine, but there's still not going to be lots of room. Well, I don't need that much room, Yvonne started but Daisy hadn't finished yet. And I'm not sure I'll be able to have all of your incense and candles burning, not with all the cooking I have to do if I'm going to keep the coffee shop going while we're on the move. And I would need to open the coffee shop, at least for a few days, otherwise I won't be able to afford fuel. The more Daisy spoke, the more issues rose to the front of her mind. And I'm not sure about getting back, either. I don't know how long I plan on staying there. I can stay on the escape with Theo, or you could. She was thinking through the process as she spoke. I'm sure he wouldn't mind at all. And then we can come back together after a couple of weeks, if that suits you, of course. You can come back sooner if you want. 
The reality was that Daisy needed to be back for winter. Mooring fees were due in September. If she wasn't back by the end of the month, with the money to pay them, she would lose her spot. Her father's spot. Still, that gave her several weeks to drive up to Slimbridge, spend some proper time with Theo, then drive back again before the weather turned and the crossing became impossible. Assuming, of course, that Yvonne really was up for one last adventure. Having got everything off her chest, Daisy finally allowed herself to take a breath. Obviously, I haven't got all the details sorted, she said, only then realising exactly how insane she must have sounded. So insane that she was about to offer Yvonne an apology and blame her outburst on overwork and lack of hydration. But instead, when she looked at Yvonne, she found a smile breaking on her face. Oh, I don't need to bother with all the details. They only bog me down, Yvonne said. I'm in. Chapter 7 Daisy and Yvonne spent the next two hours poring over maps of canals that spanned the width of Britain, along with photos of the places from Yvonne's previous travels. She had dozens of booklets containing tide times, lock information and telephone numbers for various marinas. A thing I love about the canals is how nothing changes, she said. So many of these places still look the same as the first time I visited them. It's a miracle, really. Everywhere else, buildings are going up, history coming down, and yet the canals get to stay. Do you know, there is a bridge over the canal in Malden that still has holes in it drilled during the Second World War, just in case they needed to blow it up. Is that right? Daisy didn't know whether to feel awed or terrified that she was going to be driving the boat under bridges with holes in them. It's got a very interesting history, you know. Very interesting indeed. Yvonne picked up another of the photo albums, only to rest her hand on the top without opening it. For the first time since Daisy had come to the Ariadne, the pair fell into silence. What is it? Daisy asked. Is something wrong? Wrong? Yvonne said, before shaking her head. No, no, it just brings back memories, you know. And your dad would have liked this. I bet he'd have given anything to be the one talking to you about these routes, telling you about all the places we're going to see. I'm sure he would have, Daisy agreed. A slight melancholy had fallen between them, yet before it could form any depth, Yvonne reached forward and took Daisy's hands. It's probably very selfish of me, but as he can't be here with you, I'm glad that I get to do this. It makes me feel a little closer to him, you know? Daisy knew exactly what Yvonne meant, and she was equally grateful. Perhaps this time spent together travelling to Slimbridge would be a time for Yvonne to teach Daisy more about her family, her past, and, most of all, her father. I need to figure out where I'm going to get business for the coffee shop, Daisy said breaking the nostalgia with practicality. I still need a couple more weeks of trade to have enough to cover me for the winter, which means I need to stop at as many points as we can. Maybe we can do one day travelling, one day opening the shop? Yvonne pondered the question with a shrug of her shoulder. Well, it'll take some planning, but there are definitely a few places we can stop, though it might be easier when we're through London. Through London, Daisy said, her stomach squirming. There were several days travelling between here and the big city, and she was hoping she wouldn't have to keep the coffee shop closed for more than two days at a time. Don't worry, there are a couple of places this side too, Yvonne assured her. We can stop on Burnham. It's on the River Crouch, the next estuary along from us. It's a pretty little place with a nice sea wall. I'm sure we'll get a few customers there. After that, it'll be South End. Again, you should manage a bit of business. 
It's not going to be quite so grand going through the Dartford Canal, though. You might have to swallow your pride and stay closed there, I'm afraid. Daisy nodded. The places Yvonne had mentioned sounded vaguely familiar, but not enough for her to know exactly where she was talking about. Still, it would be fine. Once they were on the canals, they would be limited in the ways they could go, and beneath those flurries of fear were definite bubbles of excitement, too. You're not allowed to mention anything to Theo, please, Daisy said to Yvonne half an hour later, as they were packing up the maps and photographs. The longer they talked, the more excited she had become, though Daisy was determined not to get ahead of herself. There was still a way to go before they could leave. Don't be silly, Yvonne assured her, and don't worry about me bringing too much stuff either. One suitcase, that's all I need. Just my precious bits and bobs. You concentrate on the coffee shop. Get a good couple of days' sales in. I'll focus on the rest of it. I've got all the information we need here. She patted the pile of booklets in front of her. The top was yellow with a torn cover, and while Daisy couldn't read the full title, the words Tidal Thames were boldly typed across the centre. I'll get us there. I just need a couple of days to check times, books and moorings, and I'd say we'd be good to go in three days. Three days? Daisy's nervousness hitched in her voice as she spoke aloud. Three days? That was absolutely ridiculous. Three days until she left not only Wildflower Lock, but the entire canal system she knew. Was she really going to do it? She answered the question in her mind without a second thought. If she was going to do it, then she needed to do it now. Any later.